Hello and welcome to this video aimed at getting you grades 5, 6 and 7 in the description question. Now this does follow on from the video I made yesterday which I will link up here about these two descriptive paragraphs about the weather. So the idea to get you these grades 5, 6 and 7 depending on what your grade is now is that you prepare some description about the weather which you know you're going to use no matter what the question. That's the grade 5, 6 and 7 technique. Now just to clarify, I've given you two paragraphs here which are grade 7 and above. Now why that's important is the rest of your writing doesn't then need to be the same standard in order to get the high grade. So your job is to learn how this works, which I'm going to show you in this video. We'll start by applying it to this picture, just like an exam, so that I can prove to you, with only a few small changes, it's going to fit every question. Right, firstly, in my grade 7 and above, my top grade videos, I tell you that the picture is only a springboard. You don't have to use the picture much at all. But for this technique, when you're trying to get grades 5, 6 and 7, you can afford to treat the picture as the thing you're pretty much going to describe. So let's imagine I have memorized my two paragraphs, knowing that I'm going to be able to use this in the exam, and therefore in bold we'll find my changes. Let's see how it works. The sun dripped warmth like hot wax, both soothing and smarting the bathers below. The beach glowed with light, the heat so strong it dazzled, and a thousand sunglasses took in the view. The horizon rippled like a bronze shield beaten by a hammer, as though some Greek god had been reborn to hurl shafts of glorious light on the grateful sun-worshippers below. The sky showed off its artist's trickery, cobalt blue depths, Azure outlines to the few white clouds, a sapphire halo around the sun. Beneath, the sunbathers shut their eyes, and sun still glowed behind, glowed behind the blackness of their lids, yellow fire sparkling and fading. The sea stretched out in lazy ripples, in a reflection of the perfect sky. OK, you can see it's not much longer than these two paragraphs were, and it uses exactly the same language and sentence structure, but it's just been adapted to fit people on a beach. So hopefully you can see how that works, but you might say, well, that's easy, Mr. Salles. You chose the sunshine and you've got a picture of sunshine, which is a fair point. So now I'm going to show you how to adapt it to this picture where it's not necessarily particularly sunny and it is a totally different landscape and I've only got the one person and the dog instead of a whole plethora of people. Well, actually, this one was even easier to adapt. You can see I've only made changes to the first paragraph. Let's see what I've added in. So here I had the sunlight smarting the young girl below. Very easy to put in. And then it dazzled her. And then I've had to include the dog while her dog gazed upwards, praying for a breeze. Well, I noticed it was a furry animal. Obviously, it would be hot, having climbed this mountain. And then we've got the idea of this Greek god hammering down uh, these shafts of light. And then where? On the granite, granite peaks, tearing the clouds below. And obviously, I got my idea about granite from looking at this rock, and I imagine the peaks bursting through the clouds. Now, I haven't had to change this at all because I can easily decide that the sky is still going to be blue. But I've got this imagination with the use of the idea of a watcher who might shut their eyes and see the sea. Now, that trick means there doesn't have to be the sea in the picture because I've clearly signposted how it's somebody who might see the sea with their eyes shut. In other words, they're looking at the blue sky and then imagining how that's very similar to a perfect blue sea. So that will exactly fit my image of the girl gazing out to the sky, imagining a perfect blue sea underneath. She doesn't actually have to have it visibly in front of her. Right, now let's step up the level of challenge 
by placing the photograph in a city, which you could well get. Can I adapt exactly the same two paragraphs for this picture? Well, let's see how I've done it. This time the sun is smarting the early shoppers striding out below. And now the glorious light is being shone on the grateful commuters below, strolling the cobbled streets on the way to work. This time, when the person might shut their eyes, they would listen to the pigeons and their cooing. And these pigeons fed for scraps on pavements indifferent to the perfect sky, because they're completely ignoring the sky by coming down to earth. So you can see how easy it is to adapt by just choosing the odd detail in the image. Here the pigeons worked brilliantly with the idea of the weather because they fit the landscape and they fit the sky. And if we return to my paragraphs you can see I've only had to make small changes, these ones in bold, in order to keep the structure the same. Now in case you didn't watch my first video this paragraph structure I'm teaching you includes 12 wow factors that are going to zap the examiner and make them want to give you a top grade. But remember, I'm not suggesting that the rest of your answer has to be that quality. Far from it. This is a way to, if you like, cheat the exam because you're going to use these two paragraphs to write your own opening. And because they will have all these skills and be at least a grade 7, 8 or 9 when you do it, then the rest of your answer can afford to drop below that and you'll still score a good grade. Yeah, I'm totally not expecting you to write to this standard all the way through. If you do, hurrah! You're on for a grade 9. But that's not what this video is expecting from you. OK, now I'm going to convince you with two things. I'm going to apply it to a fourth picture, so you're really going to ace this exam. And then I'm going to adapt it in case you've got really stormy weather or real darkness like night time. So don't go away, stay tuned. So here we go. We've got a family walking through wheat fields towards a barn. Not very inspiring. But our two paragraphs still work. The sun dripped warmth, blah, 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 smarting the spreading fields below. And then the glorious light is going to fall on the grateful crops below. Now we come to the second paragraph. Beneath, a watcher might notice waves of wheat in a golden shifting sea. I really like that because my sea in the original paragraph was a real sea, but here, of course, it's a metaphor, so I'm even more excited. Stretched out in lazy ripples, welcoming the perfect sky. And so now, because I've got the, the fields of wheat welcoming the sky, I've got some personification. And the easiest way to get all that was to adapt my existing paragraphs. So let's talk tactically here. You could write these paragraphs down, you know, or at least the original one, and practice using them on any images you get from the internet. You might be thinking, won't the examiners be really upset if loads of people start writing the same paragraphs? Well, they would. However, that's not what's going to happen, because there are probably only about three people in your class max who are watching my videos, and out of that, only one max, you, are going to do what I've just suggested. So when the examiner marks yours, they're not going to be marking hundreds of others that are the same. One might crop up for every 40 or 50 pupils nationally. And then because you will all be adapting them in different ways with different vocabulary, they certainly won't be the same. And of course they definitely won't be the same if you get stormy or dark weather. So here is my new version. Winds flex their muscles in the east, whipping the clouds into shape, marching them across the sky. The black jackboots of the rain tramped across the horizon, stamping cold onto the world beneath, as though some long dead tyrant had returned, armed with winter's fury. So this is a grade 9 paragraph because it takes the idea of the weather and turns it into an army being led by a tyrant. 
Those of you who've studied the power and conflict poetry will realise I've stolen this idea from the marvellous Exposure by Wilfred Owen, and I've just run with that idea. Why not steal ideas from great writers? That's what I do. And the other great thing about that is that it is an extended metaphor. And because I want to keep giving you the grade 9 technique, in my second paragraph, I'm going to keep the sky in this extended metaphor of the army. The sky put on its black cape, the closest clouds armoured in battleship grey, those coming behind streaked with the black of coal smoke, those on the horizon dark as slate. Beneath, a watcher might shut their eyes and pray for liberation, dreaming of the cavalry of sunlight. So hopefully, if you go back, you'll see how these two paragraphs exactly copy the sentence structure of the one that I wrote earlier. And all I've done is try to change the imagery to make it negative. So I reiterate that here. I've kept the same structure as the positive paragraph to train myself to use this in the exam. It helps me remember the rhythm of those sentences, so I will continue to get the high marks. Now, you do not have to steal my paragraphs. You're perfectly free to go and write your own, which is wonderful. But I want to leave you with this same technique, where you plan two paragraphs which show off the same skills, and you memorise them, and therefore you know you can call upon them word for word at the beginning of your description and therefore guarantee at least a grade 7 because you've crafted these paragraphs to make sure that they are at least a grade 7. And that is money in the bank. You're going to go into that exam ready to cash this cheque because that grade for this part of your writing is already yours. And how much of that grade is already yours? Well, these two paragraphs are 93 words. And I wouldn't expect you to need to write more than about 400, 450 odd words to get the grade 7 that you want. So, this is a, nearly a quarter of a grade 7. So, if this is grade 9 and the rest of your writing is only a grade 5, well, you're easily going to get a grade 6 and possibly still a grade 7 because this bit is a quarter of your whole bit of writing. Hopefully you can see what a massive advantage this is and why I'm calling it your ability to cheat the exam. Look out for my next video where I will teach you a six-part technique that will help you extend that description for the whole answer. Then I will show you the 15 skills that that whole answer will teach you. And then I'll take at least one of the pictures, possibly two, to show you what a whole answer looks like. And then on Friday, I'll release all my writing and my guide to description as an ebook, which I'll encourage you to read for free for zero pennies by signing up to Kindle Unlimited for a 30 day free trial. So you'll be able to revise, not just from the videos, but from the actual text in front of you. OK, so stay tuned for that next video. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon on my channel.